Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the Gazelle again. And in this video, we want to take a look on the flight controls of the Gazelle, including trimming, as well as the autopilot. So let's get started. And uh, this is a video I want to do by popular demand. A couple of people on the forums and on uh, my YouTube channel uh, have asked about this, uh, so I decided to do it. And um, it's because the Gazelle has a weird trimming system, and uh, the functionality of the autopilot might not be that apparent. So we will take a look on how that works and uh, see if we can learn something today. So uh, the first thing you have to understand about the Gazelle's uh, autopilot and trimming system, and especially the trimming system, is that it has actually two trimming systems, which is, uh, I think, a first time for any DCS aircraft or helicopter. And um, you have... Um, one trimming system in the Gazelle can be compared uh, compared to the uh, normal trimming system you find in a helicopter like the Mi-8 or the Huey or the K-50. And uh, that trimming system is called the magnetic brake. And uh, the magnetic brake will hold the joystick in a position the pilot selects. So if you move the joystick to the full right and you press the magnetic brake, um, the magnetic brake will try to hold the joystick there. And if you deflect it further, um, the control forces increase and uh, this most works especially well with a force feedback joystick but you can use it with a normal joystick as well and uh, I usually use it when I do bigger uh, corrections to my um, alignment of the aircraft or if I push the stick far forward and I have to hold it there I use the magnetic brake trimming which is a single button, a button push trimming process uh, to make bigger corrections and then the second trimming system, which I'm also using, uh, is a trimming system like you will find in the A-10 or any other fixed-wing aircraft. And uh, that trimming system uses a head switch, a four-way head switch you can assign in the options as well. And um, that four-way head switch allows you to make very small inputs. And you just can pull up the nose a bit and you can decrease or increase uh, the descent rate and level out just as you want it. And you can stabilize the aircraft in a level flight pass as well. So you can uh, do all the sorts you can do in an aircraft. And this is quite uh, unusual for a helicopter, but uh, the Gazelle has it for whatever reason. And uh, I think it's quite useful. And I personally use it when I'm doing level flight, like right now. I just do small inputs to have the helicopter fly at a mostly stable rate. And um, so it requires little to no input from me, which is quite nice. And yeah, that should conclude up the trimming system. So uh, let's talk about the autopilot that can do some of the functions as well. And you still really know probably the autopilot is down here. And on the left, we have the master switch. Next to that, we have the switch for the pitch control channel, the roll control channel, and the yaw control channel. And then the last switch we have, and that's the one I want to talk about today, uh, is the mode selector, which allows you to select either of two modes or disable the modes completely. And by default, the modes are completely disabled and uh, you have full control of the helicopter. And now, like right now, I'm manually using uh, my uh, joystick or my uh, cyclic to have the helicopter fly level. And on a longer flight, especially over flat terrain like this is, uh, this can be quite exhausting because I always have to do something, and especially if I want to do some uh, navigation or if we want to dial in some frequencies on the radios or whatever, I have to uh, keep an eye on the vertical speed indicator to make sure I'm not descending too much or climbing too much. So what they have added is the altitude hold mode, which is a switch in the upper position, which you can achieve by right-clicking it. And uh, the altitude hold mode, as the name suggests, will have the descent rate at zero. And if you increase the collective now, or if you increase the collective now, you can see the helicopter will accelerate. And if you reduce the collective below the point it takes for the speed, the helicopter will not descend, but instead it will decelerate. And uh, keep in mind, the minimum speed for this mode is 120 km per hour. If you fly uh, less than that speed, uh, the helicopter or the system will disengage, and you have um, manual control of the pitch again, so you have to keep that in mind. You also will get the altitude, uh, uh, the, sorry, the autopilot warning on the master control and master warning panel over here. So let's go into the neutral position on the mode switch again. And uh, we again have full control of the helicopter, which is nice. 
And now the other mode uh, we have is the speed hold mode. And let me go down and the speed hold mode is achieved by left clicking it and bringing the switch into the lower position. And now, as you can see, the helicopter started to do a quite a rapid climb and I'm not doing anything. Uh, and the reason for that is the speed hold mode tries to keep the helicopter at 120 kilometers per hour. So um, if you want to stay level or don't want to climb, we just reduce the collective. And now we're at zero climb rate and the helicopter speed is fixed at 120 kilometers per hour. If you reduce the collective below that, what's necessary to fly that speed, the helicopter will descend. And if we increase it above that, as you had, have seen before, uh, the helicopter will climb. And I'm not too sure what this mode is good for. I mean, it could be useful if you try to do an engagement or if the gunner is trying to do an engagement using the TAU missiles. And um, you want to keep it at a constant speed for him to fire the missiles and to keep the target aligned. That maybe would be a situation to use this mode. Uh, anyway, uh, I didn't find any other reason. Maybe some navigation exercises and stuff like that. Very could be useful, but... It's a bit unfortunate you cannot set the speed and that the speed is fixed to 120 km per hour. But anyways, that's how it is and we can't do much about it, can we? So let's return to the neutral mode, as I like to call it. Now we have full control of the helicopter again. And um, one thing you can do, and uh, that's something the real Gazelle has mapped to its cyclic, is um, the option to disable all autopilot input and that uh, I have mapped as well and that I will do. And as you could see on the autopilot uh, panel, all the three gauges drop down to zero or their home position. And that means that the helicopter is not uh, doing any inputs anymore. And uh, this makes the Gazelle a bit more unstable. It's a, just a bit uh, more unstable to fly. However, it also makes it more maneuverable. And um, on some tests I did, I found that the Gazelle is a bit easier to maneuver at uh, very low altitude at very high speeds. For example, during the of the Earth flying, if the autopilot input is uh, disabled. Because sometimes the autopilot tends to fight you a bit, especially during tight turns, and then uh, this really comes in handy. And uh, by pressing uh, this autopilot disconnect button again, we can enable the autopilot again. And uh, now we're back on the stabilized flight. So if you fly a uh, nap of the Earth, and, uh, you can actually keep the autopilot on. And just before you do a tight turn, you disable it, fly the tight turn, enable it again, uh, which would give you quite a good uh, flight situation, I would believe. So the last feature of the Gazelle's autopilot I want to talk about in this video is the auto hover mode. And in the auto hover mode, as the name suggests, the helicopter's autopilot is performing an automatic hover above a fixed point on the ground. And uh, the manual suggests that that point might be as big as a 10 by 10 meter area. So uh, don't expect the helicopter to be perfectly stationary, but it should uh, stay within that area. And uh, to enable the auto hover mode, we have to uh, meet some criteria. And a lot of people have been uh, having trouble with that because some of the criteria might not be immediately apparent from inside the cockpit. So uh, the biggest point while trying to enable the auto hover mode is the speed uh, because you're not allowed to move faster than 18 kilometers per hour opposite to the ground or over the ground and uh, the gazelle's cockpit doesn't have a ground speed indicator instrument by default however the gazelle does have a doppler navigation system and that doppler navigation system allows you to enable or to display a ground speed and we can do that down here on the navigation unit and if you move the mode switch to the VS, their position, the upper number indicates our ground speed, measured in kilometers per hour. And that is measured by the Doppler navigation system on the bottom of the aircraft. So if we slow down, we should get, we should get uh, the, the ground speed decreasing. It's now 100 kilometers per hour, and it's decreasing further, 70, 60, and going down. And the maximum speed, as said, must be below 18 kilometers per hour to engage the auto hover mode. So once we have slowed down far enough, uh, we have to keep an eye on the vertical speed indicator and uh, we want to be at the vertical speed less than plus minus 60 meters. And uh, that's happening right now. 
And the last criteria is to not have the helicopter banked more than uh, 20 degrees and pitched more than 20 degrees. But if we meet the speed criteria, we are not doing the other one as well. Uh, because uh, you're not going to be in a 20 degree pitch by constant uh, without accelerating or decelerating. So now we're moving a bit backwards. Let me accelerate a bit forward. And um, we're within criteria. So now press the enable button. And there we go. You saw a small truck in the engine torque indicator as well as the rudder pedals and that shows us that the auto hover is engaged. If I'm not looking at the instruments, for example if I'm trying to establish myself behind a house or a hill, I will uh, use uh, a quick check uh, or quick tap on the rudder pedals because the rudder is very sensitive and it doesn't really mess up uh, the positioning of the helicopter if you do it just a quick tap and if it doesn't respond to the quick tap the helicopter's auto hover has engaged. And now looking at the auto hover um, we are at a very small ground speed of less than uh, two kilometers. Okay, now it's accelerating a bit because we're swinging, but uh, it should be quite slow. And the altitude is kept automatically as well. However, in the real gazelle, you wouldn't have this functionality. The real gazelle doesn't do auto altitude hold for you. You have to do that manually. And right now, I can move my uh, collective here on my desk. It doesn't move the in-game collective. However, Polychop uh, was so nice to include an option to quickly disable that automatic altitude hold. And that's done by pressing the C button on your keyboard. And if I move my collective now, you can see the torque indicator moving and I can bring the helicopter into a climb or a descent. And this is very useful if you try to, um, for example, if you try to hover behind a mountain ridge or a tree line or a house and you want to bring the helicopter above that, you don't have to disable the auto hover. You can just press C, increase the collective until you reach your desired height and then you can press C again. And later on, uh, if we get multi-crew and I have a gunner in the second seat and I don't have to do the flying anti-gunning or aiming at the same time, I will uh, disable this feature or I will not uh, use the automatic auto uh, altitude hold and I will just do that manually. So I have something to do while the helicopter gunner is uh, operating the TAU missiles or the HOT-3 missiles. And this also allows you to quickly duck behind the cover so you can just reduce the collective descent a bit, increase the collective until the aircraft has stabilized or the helicopter is stabilized again, and you're happy uncle. Anyway, let's enable the automatic altitude hold again for this video, because the last uh, part of the auto hover mode is uh, using the uh, cycling system to align the helicopter uh, to the axis of the cycling system. If you look at the, the display, we can see that the helicopter's camera is now looking to the left-hand side. It's looking somewhere around that hills, or it's aiming at, at those hills over there. And um, we want to align the helicopter for a HOT3 uh, shot. However, we cannot fire the HOT3 because the helicopter is facing the wrong direction, obviously. So what we can do now, which I also have mapped to my stick, is press the um, heading sync button and the autopilot um, will turn the helicopter towards the target similar to the turn to target function in the K50. And uh, sometimes this is not working, which I have found. And um, the reason for that, it seems to be only working if the camera is uh, positively ground stabilized or until the camera has the point on the ground fixed. And uh, I found that uh, sometimes uh, if it doesn't work with the daylight camera, switching to the IR camera um, does the trick and you can enable that mode. And once you have enabled the mode, the helicopter will always follow the camera or turn with the camera as long as the mode is enabled. To disenable, uh, to disenable it, just uh, pull uh, the button or push the button once more and the camera now will moves independently from the helicopter again. And yeah, this uh, pretty much concludes the flight controls and autopilot video for the Gazelle. I hope you liked this video and learned something. And uh, thank you very much for watching and fly safe.